Hey everyone, Miss Fisher here, and today we're going to be reading Grace for President by Kelly DePuccio. Let's get started. One Monday morning in September, Mrs. Barrington rolled out a big poster with all of the president's pictures on it. Grace Campbell could not believe her eyes. Where are the girls? That's a very good question, said Mrs. Barrington. The truth is, our country has never had a woman president. No girl president? Ever? Grace asked. No, I'm afraid not, said Mrs. Barrington. Grace sat at her desk and stewed. No girls? Who had ever heard of such a crazy thing? Finally, she raised her hand. Yes, Grace? I've been thinking it over, and I'd like to be president. Several students in the class laughed. Well, I think that's a star-spangled idea, Grace, said Mrs. Barrington. In fact, we can have our own election right here at Woodrow Wilson Elementary. The snickering in the room stopped. Grace smiled. Would anyone else like to run for president? Mrs. Barrington asked the class. Nobody raised their hand. Becoming president was going to be easy, Grace thought. The next day, Mrs. Barrington made an announcement. In the name of democracy, I have invited Mr. Waller's class to join our election. Their class has nominated Thomas Cobb to be their presidential candidate. Grace's heart sank. Thomas was the school spelling bee champion. His experiments always took a blue ribbon at the science fair. And he was captain of the soccer team. Becoming president wasn't going to be so easy after all, Grace thought. The teachers put the names of all 50 states and the District of Columbia into a hat. Everyone except for Grace and Thomas got to choose a state. I'm Texas, said Anthony. I'm New Hampshire, said Rose. I'm Michigan, said Robbie. What does the number 17 mean? Each state is assigned a number of electoral votes. That number is determined by how many people live in that state, said Mrs. Barrington. Each of you will be a representative for your state. Altogether, our country has 538 electoral votes, Mr. Waller explained. On election day, the candidate who, will, who receives 270 electoral votes or more wins the election. Why 270? asked Rose. That's more than half of all the electoral votes, Mr. Waller said. Becoming president really wasn't going to be easy, Grace thought. Grace came up with a campaign slogan. Make history, vote Grace Campbell for president. Thomas came up with his own campaign slogan. Vote for Thomas Cobb, the best man for the job. Grace listened to what issues were important to the students and she made a list of campaign promises. A peaceful school, no bullies, a cleaner school, no littering, better hot lunches, no more fish stick tacos. Thomas made up his own list of promises. Free tutoring, free soccer lessons, fish stick tacos every week. Grace made campaign posters and buttons. Thomas made posters and buttons too. Each week, the teachers set aside time for the candidates to meet with their constituents. 
Polls were taken, voters were making their choices. Grace continued to campaign. At recess, she gave speeches. During lunch, she handed out free cupcakes. After school, she held rallies. Meanwhile, Thomas wasn't worried. He had cleverly calculated that the boys held slightly more electoral votes than the girls. At recess, Thomas studied his spelling words. During lunch, he worked on his latest science experiment. After school, he played soccer. Even before the election, Grace made good on her promises. She joined the safety squad. She organized a school beautification committee and she volunteered her time in the school cafeteria. All right, everyone, that was Grace for President. Now, I really enjoyed this book because it teaches us how our president gets elected. All right, my friends, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.